Hello everyone, Preston here with another video on my channel Prolix Art. Today I'm going to be working on a perspective piece for a bowling alley concept artwork because I want to build up my portfolio like those who have been on my channel before know I want to get into the gaming industry or animation industry and I was thinking of a different concept at first with little room but then I thought, hey, why don't I just make a bowling alley and see how that goes and push those environment studies out and get things moving. Got a lot of people saying that I'm really good at making art when it comes to backgrounds and I've always felt like that's kind of a farce that people tell me but I wanted to test that out and see how well I could do a background with as much perspective as possible and trying to keep it as accurate as I can for the finished product. Now, once I got into this part, I started doing the line art, and this is when I got a little bit more particular about where everything is going and how everything's gonna be shaped. And it took me some time to figure out everything that was gonna go on with this piece. And even then I fixed it even more when I got into the rendering process of this. But these lines were just to help me figure out where everything is going to be placed exactly just in time for the rendering process. Now for those that don't know how I started this out, I did use a shape tool with the 99 stars technique, which if you guys want me to show how to do that in the future, let me know in the comments. But right now we're getting into the part where I just used the selection tool to shade everything out, make sure I've got everything separated by its own layer. And the difficulty with this process is honestly, it takes a lot of time to prep. It takes so much time to prepare for this version or this way to make everything work out because it's not really a difficult process. It's just the process that takes a long time because you are separating each and every plane, every shape to its own layer. And separating this makes it so it's a lot easier in the long run to color it and render it out. Because this is a way that most industry professionals actually do backgrounds as they render it out this way at least the ones that I've worked with there's other techniques that other background artists use this is the one that I've learned is a way that professionals use it to expedite their process so if someone wanted to do the shading they could or the base shading like where it is right now they can send it to someone else to do more of the in-depth rendering and shading and another person to do the coloring so this is just a process that most artists use to make sure that they can work well with the pipeline in the industry. But that can change depending on which industry you go to or who you talk to because everyone has their own techniques and styles. Now with this process of getting all those shapes together, you do want to make sure that all those shapes are separated into masks that you can use later on with your artwork to render out like I am doing currently. This rendering process is the second part that takes the most amount of time once you get all the masks set up and all the layers is rendering everything out to its darkest darks and the lightest lights that you can. Because that's going to be what makes it the strongest it can be when it comes to shapes, the driving force, and also how you can actually add textures to this later on for specific items. So if you wanted the couch to look more, you know, weather worn, or if you wanted the bowling balls to look more gloss, you can actually add those into the, a separate mask that highlights those specific items to perform those textures that you're looking for. And that's kind of the key thing about this process is that you can actually make all of these different textures easier with different masks highlighting different items on the illustration or concept art. And this can actually also help you with improving and using those same selection masks for the coloring in the future, which you will see here in a little bit once the rendering is all done, is I actually go through and render everything out with a specific tool. 
Now with this bowling alley, it was something where I wanted it to have a single point of lighting that can help it improve its location and improve these spots where it needs to because single lighting even with two point is a lot easier than multi lighting and that's kind of the way I wanted. I did play around with the idea of having it have an indoor lighting but I think that just the single lighting was a good spot to understand what I needed as the concept and possibly push that forward in other images or illustrations in the future to try them out with different techniques. With everything going on, you can see that I'm actually pushing all the shapes, giving them highlights, even rim lights, all of that with the process that you're seeing here. With this though, there's gonna be a lot of jumping around here in a little bit of me actually adding different areas of shadow and trying to push these so it's as dark but not as gloomy as you would think because once the colors start popping in here in a second they will show a lot of potential with how everything was going because I'm just going to start throwing in colors using gradient maps which is a fast way to render this stuff out there's multiple ways that you can color uh, gradients or value shading images. I personally like doing either gradient maps or overlays, but gradient maps actually help with this selection tool process because then you can choose the different colors more accurately to match the vibe that you're looking for. Now, this is a huge process and I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about this, but from here on, it's just checking out the gradient maps, making sure they're accurate. And then afterwards, I will be doing a lot of touch-ups to making sure that the illustration matches all the way through and it doesn't have some off colors that came from the gradient maps. So I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and if you like it, please like, comment what you guys think about it or if you have any questions about this process and I can make a little short video about it or even make a long form video about it as well to help give you guys some tips and pointers of the process that I have here. And don't forget to subscribe. So I will see you guys all again next time and hope you enjoy the rest of this video.